In today's Leeds news, Bamford exit rumours, Leeds under 21s win, Thomas debut delight, and guests at Torp Art. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the view. Jer here on the 22nd of October. Game day for Leeds United as we will play Watford this evening. But we've got a bit of news to get into. Before we get into it too much, just a real quick one to point out. Uh, happy birthday, Joe Roden, who celebrates his 27th birthday, as well as Leeds United club legend Paul Reaney, who celebrates his 80th birthday today. So happy birthday to both of them. Also, just to let you know, there is some information down below in the description around the Leeds Legends game that will be taking place in Dublin at the Carlisle Grounds uh, in May next year. You can check out some details on that. I will have more details on that throughout the week and into next week. So if you're interested in going to see that game or getting involved in the other stuff that's involved around that game, you can contact the details down below for tickets. And I'll give you some more details as we go through this week and next week. Let's just get the... Uh, the game out away tonight and I'll give you some more details over the course of the next week. Uh, moving on to the news, and we'll start off with Patrick Bamford's situation. And last week we heard that there were some rumours around the possible exit from the club of Patrick Bamford, but they weren't really substantiated with any real sources. But today there's a bit more meat on the bones on this. Patrick Bamford has two years left on his current Leeds deal. And Daniel Farkett did say in a press conference yesterday that he believed that that Bamford is a Leeds United legend and that Leeds would already be a Premier League club had Pat Bamford played more games over the last two seasons. Bamford has struggled with injuries over the last three years at the club and now has some real competition in that number nine spot from Matteo Joseph who has been in fine form this season and very much in form Joel Piru who's finding his feet in the number nine position for Leeds United. According to Team Talk they claim that former Premier League scout Mick Brown has said that he has heard that Patrick Bamford wants to leave and also that Leeds will agree with this as he doesn't fit the bill of a Premier League striker for the club. Bamford has been at Leeds for seven seasons. He's played 192 games and has 60 goals for the club in all competitions. Brown said on Bamford's situation or Bamford's perspective on this the following. I've heard he wants to leave. He's been there for a while now, so a change of location might be tempting him to move on. And if he's not playing regularly, I can see him looking for a way out. Being on the bench every week would be frustrating for him because he'll be used to playing regular minutes starting in the team. Not so much over the last couple of years with the injury situation that he has had. But he went on to say what this looks like from a Leeds United's perspective. And on Leeds' part of this, he said the following. I can see Leeds being keen to move him on as well because his record isn't very good. He's had injuries in the last couple of years as well. Leeds want to get promoted and they want to be a Premier League side. He doesn't fit the bill because he's been there before and he's not done it. I think it's time for him to move on and it's time for Leeds to move him on. But that move won't be upwards. It will be downwards. For me, he's been an underachiever in his career. Patrick Bamford's current salary, as well as the two years left on his deal, for me, makes any move away from the club unlikely. I do still feel he'll have a part to play in Leeds' possible promotion promotion this season. I think he'll have some moments in this year where he will be important. Last year's Leeds' best run happened when he was in the number nine position, but you have to say that Joel Peru and Matteo Joseph have both stepped up fantastically well this year to fill that gap and to get goals. And we have now started to see goals being spread more and more around the, 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 the team with this new look Leeds United side that's not so reliant on individuals and appears to be more reliant on the strength of the actual whole core of the group. So whether Paddy can get into that team, being frustrated at being out of the team, he can't really be frustrated being out of the team. He's been injured for such a long time. Leeds are doing the right thing and making sure he's 100% over everything before they put him back in for some serious load. So he'll have to wait and see what happens there. Daniel Farke has also said that, that, that Pat Bamford will will be involved probably between now and Christmas. The load of games would suggest that would be logical. However, he said he will have to wait for his opportunity. And while well, the two boys ahead of him are scoring goals every other game, he's going to have to wait. Uh, moving on to the Legion Night Under 21, who had, had a terrific performance last night as they ran out an impressive result and a 3 1 win in the Premier League Cup last night. The goals in the game came from Reese Chadwick, Jeremiah Mullen, as well as Joe Richards. And we saw some returns to the Under 21 side from injuries. We get Connor Ferguson, Joe Snowdon, and Connor Douglas have all returned from injury to the under-21 side, which was great to see for them. And we had an under-21 debut last night as well, as Josh Hamilton playing his first game for the under-21. So, typical week for the under-18s during the week or the weekend, who suffered a 6-0 defeat to Derby County, and they want to dust that off. But a lot of that under-18 side is playing 21s as well. So, it's a, it's a mixed bag between both those teams right now. But um, great result for the under-21s. Sticking with the under-21s in one capacity, and one of the players that left Leeds you know, this week was Luca Thomas, who went out to York City on loan. And he hasn't taken long 
to replicate the form that he has shown so far for the Legionite under-21s so far this season. Thomas took just 22 minutes into his debut to get on the score sheet for York City in their game against Ebbsfleet. Thomas came off the bench in the 74th minute to score in York's 4-0 win at Ebbsfleet. So a fantastic start for Luca Thomas, a terrific finish. Um, Questionable defending at one point, but he, he capitalises on it very, very well. And a very sharp, snappy finish from Thomas, who just continues to get better this season. And as I said, there's a lot of buzz and talk around what will be happening to him in January and maybe next season as well. So we'll keep an eye on him. But he will be also joined at York City by former Leeds United youth player Max McMillan, who has just signed for York City on a free transfer. He left Leeds a while ago, but um, been floating around without a club. And now he will join York City and team up with... Luca Thomas, so the best luck to both the lads, and we'll keep an eye on, on Luca throughout the season. And then moving into the main story of the day, and this is guests at Torp Arch. As we live in this world right now where Leeds are trying to sort out a free transfer and make sure they get the right one in and not rushing it over getting the right person to fit the bill. Daniel Farker has a profile of player and he has listed this quite consistently. He wants somebody who can play centre defensive midfielder and maybe even cover at centre back. He wants someone who has some form of fitness behind him in a pre-season. He would like someone who can accept the fact that they're a backup player and when the injured players return, step back away from the side. It would be tricky to get someone to agree to that, but there have been rumours of a lot of names up at the club, but Farka has confirmed yesterday that the club have had several people at the club or guests at the club over the last couple of weeks, but has scrutinised the quantity that's been labelled at Leeds as well as all of them being trialists. Leeds have been linked with Czech Kuyate, Francis Coquelin, Christoph Kramer and very, very recently with Joshua Gilafogi as well in the last couple of days about a player who could potentially be at Leeds right now and he's signing for the club later on this week. Farka didn't want to talk too much about the situation, but on it, he said the following. No, I don't want to speak too much about what's happening behind closed doors. A few guests also don't mean that they're just trialists. I've also read some articles about who was in or whatever. You wouldn't have that much space around the training ground to have all those players who have been linked with being on trial. Sometimes it's also funny. No, I don't like to lift the curtain anyhow. It's more like, yes, there were a few people around, but that doesn't mean that they're all just players who are on trial or even competing against each other or whatever. We do it at a professional level and we do it because we stick to the rules and having the right decisions. Let's see how the outcome is. Daniel Farkett did say that if Leeds managed to get to November without making a permanent signing of a free agent, that Leeds would hold off until January to look at that position and see where they are with Ethan Ampadu due back a couple of weeks after that as well. So you'd imagine though Farkett would want to get this one nailed down in the next couple of weeks. It's great to see Joe Roden and now Tanaka playing very, very well. But the voice in the back of your head knows that Daniel Farkett wants a central defensive midfielder in there, that there's nerves around the gaps that are possibly left by that gap. So by not having a central defensive midfielder. So I think it's, it's clear as day that as soon as he has the opportunity to get a CDM, it's very likely they will go straight back into that position. So we'll have to wait and see. I would imagine he'll try and get this sorted over the next couple of days. He did allude at the weekend that maybe having it done by the end of this week, they want to get Watford out of the way tonight and then look at it properly. And again, yeah, you'd want to get it done before the game at the weekend. And then that would give you the international break that's coming up for a chance to really bed in this player and work on their fitness levels and have them ready then for the Christmas period. That will be a very, very busy and important period for the club. Anyway, we've got a game tonight against Watford and it'll be an important game for Leeds. Can we continue the momentum unbeaten in five? Can we get another win? It'll be a fantastic performance. Two goals and a win tonight will put us top of the table, at least until Sunderland and Burnley play. So... Keep an eye on that one. And I will be back later on with the countdown to kickoff slash called the warm-up. We're changing the name. Kind of like the warm-up. That'll be out later on this evening. It will be pre-recorded because I will be out. So keep an eye out for that. And I'll talk to you later. Best of luck. See ya. Bye.